We're here on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. It's home to the Oglala Lakota people, people of the plains and people of the buffalo. Prior to Western contact, our people had a strong, sustainable economy that was built around a nomadic lifestyle that was dependent on the buffalo. We lived like that for thousands of years. We built many cultural teachings and traditions around that lifestyle. And it was a very sustainable lifestyle. We were a part of the land. We were part of everything in life. In the end, the lands were conquered. Indians were forced to live on reservations. Then Indians began being sort of dealt with as a problem. Now, present day, you see reservations, particularly this one at Pine Ridge and some of the surrounding reservations, are some of the poorest places in America. Policies were created that created perpetual poverty in these communities. We're trying to untangle that web. The fact remains, Native Americans face poverty rates that are higher by far than the national average. And that's more than a statistic, that's a moral call to action. We've got to do better. The Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota, which is one of the poorest parts of the country. And unemployment there is rampant. High rates of disease and violence are often forcing folks to downsize their dreams. These are the challenges that we can only solve together. And that's been our approach to the unique challenges facing Indian country. Poverty and its repercussions have plagued this reservation for many years. Today, it's endemic and systematic. A struggling local economy, unemployment, food scarcity, poor transportation and education options, and a lack of quality housing and financing all restrict opportunities for growth and progress. In the daily struggle to survive, drug and alcohol abuse are rampant, and suicide an all too frequent occurrence. Things have remained unchanged for many years, not only because of financial and regulatory obstacles, but also from a pervasive hopelessness rooted in generations of struggle. It is now time for us to believe in our potential and push for change in a positive direction. It's tough out there. It's still home to, to people. I think a lot of them wouldn't exchange it either. That process to get to the bottom of that barrel, if that didn't happen overnight. For our people, we just have to have patience and belief because it's gonna be a process to come back out of that barrel. Well, how old are you? I'm four. Yeah, you're four. We have all these issues facing our young people. I think that when we look at these things in a bigger picture, we are the original people. And I really believe that we have a message for the world. We need to empower that next generation so that they can share that message. I want them to, to live this lifestyle the best they can, to walk in a good and peaceful and humble way. Ask the children, what kind of life do you want? What kind of expectations do you have of us as the adults in your life? The Lakota believe that everything is connected. Ceremonies are dedicated to nurturing the spirits of the present and the past. To this day, the sun dance is one of the most important rituals performed, a place and time to connect with our ancestors. Through this way of life, there was a powerful exchange that spurred a movement of cultural identity and hope. How long are you going to let other people decide the future for your children? Are you not warriors? And they said, it's time to stop talking and start doing. Don't come from a place of fear. Come from a place of hope. We all had so much to talk about when it came to complaining. It was frustrating. There is nobody holding you back anymore. When are you going to stop depending on other people to make a way for your children. If you want something to happen, that change has to start within. The movement's here and the time's now to do this. The people are survivors here and there's such a life behind that. 
Thunder Valley represents the essence of the culture, the individuality, the family, the community, and it all ties together with this project and this grand vision of what it can be. This is non-governmental community development in the sense that it's being led by grassroots community people, not by institutions and governments. The Thunder Valley kind of facilitates a safe place for families to come together and have these hard conversations, these truthful conversations about our community. We as Lakota, we help each other. And all the struggles and all the daily struggles that our youth have you know, today, it's really hard for them to see that. I see it as a, as a reservation-wide project. Thunder Valley is a cultivation of being empowered spiritually and taking responsibility for the future. And so that's the spirit in which Thunder Valley CDC was created. And it's a spirit that we continue today. The Thunder Valley Project is a 34-acre planned community development with single and multifamily housing, an emergency youth shelter, food growing operations, community and educational facilities, as well as retail spaces for local businesses. The Thunder Valley Project isn't just about building homes, it's about building up a people, and in the process, creating a national model to alleviate poverty and build sustainable communities. Through innovative programs, the project will train the local workforce in green building practices and guide families to build their own homes. Thunder Valley CDC is invested in a set of principles that will shape the holistic goals of its citizens, developing a healthy, energy-efficient model, empowering families to take responsibility for their future. Its purpose is to knock down doors that have been closed on our people, to create new pathways, access to financing, access to jobs. And so by creating an actual development that becomes a rallying point, rather than sitting back and changing those things through policy, you're changing them through action. That's really the true power of what the development really has the ability to do. Home ownership is a pathway out of poverty. Our community has told us that we need housing, jobs, and opportunity, and we've been trying to meet that expectation. Everything that we're doing here, from the design of the community to the choice of infrastructure to the design of houses, what we're trying to create is a national model. So the lessons that are learned here are the things that are successful, but also the things that aren't successful are equally important so that we can share those with other tribal communities, rural communities, even urban communities looking at sustainability. And of course, partnering with local universities has been a big part of that. Part of the research for us kind of revolves around creating affordable, energy-efficient homes for the community with the least amount of utility costs so that there's opportunities for home ownership. Pine Ridge has some really extreme weather. Sustainable housing really becomes your first line of defense against weather and climate change. We're designing homes for 50 years from now, 100 years from now. It's good to keep building, teaching these students, because somebody's going to have to carry this up. If we get this, we plant that seed that what's happening here, and they see this, it's not only going to happen here. We could move through Thunder Valley. We could move to different districts or different reservations. We could just keep doing this. But if this is a show-me place. People have to see what we're doing. What does rebuilding community mean? Okay, yes, it's about the physical structure. Yes, it's about housing, and it's about roads, and it's about power and energy and those kinds of things, but it's also about coming together to harvest food for ourselves and really empower our young people to be able to do that as well. The Lakota people are incredibly resilient and there's a lot of activity on Pine Ridge right now. There's a lot of energy. I'm very hopeful that the work that we're doing here is going to make an impact and education really is the critical component for systematic change. A lot of people don't really think about their future down here. And like, unless they're like really actually trying to get somewhere. Like people are just trying to live day to day and get through life. Like we're trying to change it, make it so that people have hope. All these little fires of opportunity and of solution building are happening all around us every day on this reservation. 
every day in this community. And I think there needs to be more said about that. There's solutions happening here, that it's not just all misery and harshness, that the beauty that people romanticize about Lakota country, that's real. But look under that because the reason why that's real is because of a resilient people. It's that vision about changing, you know, changing the, the culture here, changing the environment, changing the opportunity for, for all people. And I think that's a Lakota value. There's nowhere else in the world I want to raise my kids. Right here. Some people say, well, there's 80% poverty on Pine Ridge or all this bad statistics. Why do you want to raise your kids there? Because it's important for us to raise our kids amongst our own people. The work that we're doing is creating a pathway for our children and giving them opportunities that we didn't have. Opportunities at a job, opportunities at a home, owning a home. I have zero doubt that we're going to change this res forever. Our vision has to be as big as the challenges we are facing. Thunder Valley CDC is working hard to turn this vision into reality for our community, and at the same time, to help our planet. This journey towards a vibrant, equitable, and sustainable future begins here. Day by day, family by family, community by community, Nick and his nonprofit, have helped inspire a new beginning for Pine Ridge. And Nick says, we've decided as a community to take ownership of our own future. See, that makes me hopeful, talking to young people like that. Because throughout Indian country, you've got a generation ready to build on what generations before them have built. They're out there, stirring with hope and restless for change and ready to take ownership of their future. You see